Right? Did you get that with the, the three cigars? <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, how you doing? That's Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke. Coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio Headquarters in Hooksett, New Hampshire. Be sure to subscribe to us on Podbean, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, Google, especially YouTube, where you're actually watching us right now. We'd okay. really appreciate it. Or wherever you get your podcast from. I'm Pastor Padron, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Paul and Dave. Yo. Nick is not with us tonight, but we have Bree from the 724 Lounge, and we have Jimmy Price from CLE back with us on the show. Thank you for being here, Jimmy. Thank you. Always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Now, uh, we are going to be talking uh, cutting cigars, prepping pipe tobacco, how to do it, how not to do it. But, you know, we got to smoke while we're doing it. And we are going to start off with a cigar, the Winwood Hills Unhinged. You want to tell us a little bit about this cigar the there, Jimmy? Unhinged is part of the Winwood Hill brands. Mm -hmm. We have actually three cigars. There's the Deranged, which is a Ecuadorian grown Sumatra wrapper, mm -hmm. and Dominican and Honduran fillers. And we have the Unhinged in our hand, the same fillers, and the classic Connecticut broadleaf Maduro. And then we also have the Mayhem, which is 100% Corojo. Okay. These are all. In a Rothschild format, four and a mm -hmm. half by 50. Mm. Um, and they've been out a couple of years now. And yeah. It's also a new format we brought out. Uh, they're available in 60 by 6 as well. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. I mean, um, I cut it there. What's the history behind the Winwood Hills brand? Uh, the brand started um, prior to my joining um, CLE Cigar Company. It was originally produced in Miami. Mm. Uh, for some time, part of the factory fresh program, we were actually they were making the cigars that day and would box them that day and also ship that day. Uh, so that brand kind of went away, and then um, in late 2018, it was uh, resurrected. Mm -hmm. And with the three different blends, two of the blends are made at the old General Cigar Factory. Okay, uh, Christian's dad, uh, Julio, uh, Worked with that factory back in like 1976, 1977. He mm -hmm. worked on dark tobaccos there. Um, so the brand was uh, reunited, uh, reintroduced uh, with three different blends. So the Mayhem, which is the all Corojo, is made at the Aroa Farm. Right. And then the Deranged and the Unhinged are at the Old General Cigar Factory. So what's, what's with the names like Deranged and Unhinged and Mayhem? I mean, are these cigars yeah, perfect to... for the pandemic? Well, that's true. <laughs> I, just, I can't argue with right. that marketing. Uh, it's good it marketing. Very, uh, it's good marketing. It's very prescient of you um, to name them such. You know, it is what it is, right? I guess yeah. It's, uh, I was just saying, I, you, most people in the business are deranged. Right. <laughs> well, we know you are. Yeah, um, there's a lot of mayhem. Sometimes that's true. you become there's a unhinged. lot of mayhem. Yep, yeah. yep, that's so. true. That's true. Uh, you never know what you're going to get in this industry. Yeah, yeah. yep. Now it, it's uh, a fun brand, so uh, we've been doing well with it. The um, uh, Rothschild size is a great size for this cigar, um, and the price point is great. It's Seven seventy five. Am seven, I remember? Seven seventy five. Yeah. yeah seven seventy five. Yeah. Um, and and so that's great. One of the things that that and I don't know if you know the answer to this or not, hmm. but why fifty count boxes? Yeah. Like I think you could have this fly off the shelf in a twenty count box or twenty five count box at a at a price point of seven dollars and change a stick. Right. But I, he's you know he opted to do the 50 count box which is great for the shop because people buy the singles and right and stuff They're, like that refillable by bundles of 25 correct yeah um so the a lot of the uh, traditional Rothschilds came in 50 count boxes and still do oh well maybe that's why you know uh, especially punch yeah classic mm -hmm. the punch Rothschilds one, one of the great cigars um still to this day we all know christian but, loves the classics yes but we have been, as you know the asylum brand is in 50 count mm -hmm. um um, yeah. most of them are in 50 count, the smaller ring gauges. The smaller ring gauges, yeah. yeah, the 5 by 50s and yeah, such. the 52 by 6, the Toro, the mm. Gordo. But... Oh. Mm. Well, uh, Brie, Gulp, what are we drinking with the cigar tonight? Drink. So tonight? Drink. 
We are drinking, <laughs> so you guys can see here, some Smuggler's Motch Maple Whiskey. Oh, so, Smuggler's Motch. Oh, I know that. Um, Smuggler's Motch? Smuggler's Motch. Rhymes with Scotch. Mm, mm, Scotch. Mm. I think I've been there. Smuggler's Motch. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, Smuggler's Notch Maple Whiskey. So, uh, you're probably wondering a little bit about the name. Wandering. 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 We're wandering. Are you one of those As people? We... <laughs> <laughs> Bree, we haven't seen you on the and show in a long time. I We're just, just having fun. Bree, have you been yeah. drinking prior to us? Did Maybe I have. I think that was up to here before we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this, um, this whiskey tonight actually wasn't... Um, what I chose, but I think that it's oh. going to be. <laughs> Sorry. I Bitchy. think that it's going to end up being Total a great thing. pairing so far. Yeah, so. so far it's going really yeah. well with this. So there's what? So Says, there's some. Uh, it, it, there's maple actually added to the to the whiskey. Yeah, there is, but it's not disgusting. Normally, I would, <laughs> <laughs> Normally, oh, I would say priceless. when people try to add maple to whiskey, it becomes like the focal point of the whiskey. It adds too much flavor. You end up with like something that's way too, too sweet, way mm -hmm. too overpowering. But this whiskey actually happens to... Um, Not suck. And yes, to incorporate <laughs> maple notes from it. You get like a little bit of caramel, a little bit of toffee. Um, a lot of maple, but not in an overpowering way at all. Mm. Um, and yeah, I was I was reading the story a little bit mm -hmm. um, on the back of the bottle, and it was saying it was called Smuggler's Notch because um, back in the day, I guess people had to um, smuggle things through the rugged mountains of Vermont and New Hampshire. And so this whiskey, I guess you know people would probably smuggle whiskey too. And so this whiskey been known kind to of happen. was been paying an homage the to <laughs> the smuggler's lifestyle. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. do you guys think, Paul? This was your pick. Do you think he did all right with the uh, cigar here? I think I did a great job with this. I think it did. Bree notwithstanding. Well, she's sitting. So. I've, actually, <laughs> <laughs> I've actually had this uh, this particular whiskey about two or three years ago when I went up to Vermont, and I was in a, in the actually not in the distillery, but they had a distillery shop in Burlington. And uh, so they were doing a tasting, and I, I had uh, a couple of their samples, and I really liked this particular one. The, the maple is, however, aged in their bourbon barrels before they actually add it to the, to the bourbon. So it does pick up a little bit more of the bourbon flavor. That's mm -hmm. why I think, I don't think, that's why you say it's not disgusting. Right. It just adds just a little bit of sweetness. It's, it's organic maple, so it's really, really nice and clean, but just, just gives it just a little bit of, of sweet pop to it. It's not cloying. It's it's it's, it's not it's cloying. Cloying. It's definitely cloying. whiskey. Yeah. Uh, yes. No, it does. Has, it's it, definitely it, whiskey. The bourbon has a little flavor bit of... with the maple. I mean, the maple is in there, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's not like it, a fireball or something. It's like got that. a little oh. burn to yeah. it. Just yeah. a little bit of that burn to it, but mm. that but it's nice and smooth as well. So. Yep. Very very nice. Uh, so, Jimmy, what have you been up to since you were on the show last? So it's been a few months. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just cranking away. New Just year. cranking away. Yep. New 2021. Year. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, back out on the road, uh, of course. So you had a little vacation there. Ah uh, yes. Snuck off to Florida for a week. That for... was nice. Yeah. I, I think I asked you about being on this show while you were for on vacation. First week of uh, January. Well, unfortunately, we didn't have our s annual sales meeting, mm. uh, which typically falls the first week of January. So uh, it just worked out with um, you know great flights and uh, and you know cheap spot. So that's what we did. Hmm. It was fun. We yeah. had lucked out with the weather. Flew into Tampa Bay. Never been there before. Did Ybor City for a little while. Nice. Before we went back to the plane. Um, I had mistakenly thought that that was in Miami. I'm a pretty good map guy, but <laughs> when we were driving the rent-a-car <laughs> back. You're, you're, like, you're off about 500 miles. I know. Yeah. About four and a half hours. I'm usually um, a good map guy. I, I, I saw something that said Ybor. I'm like, isn't that Miami? Ybor? No. <laughs> Igor? So no. it wasn't. And then we went. No. I don't know. But Ybor City was really, really cool. Um, that was a fun place. It reminded me of the village in, in uh, New York, uh, West Village. <laughs> very, uh, very unique place. Another um, city that's very far away from Tampa. Yes, yes. Yeah. Love Ybor but, City. Uh, we hit mm. three of the, um, you know, the shops that roll with cigars there, and you can buy them there. Mm -hmm. And then we went uh, grab some lunch, and then dropped the car <laughs> off, and then uh, flew back home. That sounds nice. Yeah, it sounds like a nice yeah. day. Now. Um, you know, recently, and we talked about this on the show a couple of months ago, the, uh, uh, 
the most popular size for the longest time in cigars have been the R- Robusto or the Rothschild. Now it's the Toro, mm-hmm. right? But we're seeing a lot of uh, Robusto and Rothschild's, you know, size cigars come to market. You know, like Winwood Hills, for instance, the uh, Aladino Vintage Rothschild mm-hmm. for another. There's other ones out there. Those are two great examples, though. Do you see short cigars is still having a, a big place in the market? Uh, I think so, especially in the colder colder markets. Mm-hmm. As you know, we're in, uh, yes. you know, it's about a 45-minute cigar, mm-hmm. an hour, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. That's a quick cigar. 20 That's, minutes if you're Nick. Yep. Uh, some <laughs> people, you know, if they have two or three a day, it's not two or three 60 by six, if you will, mm-hmm. or, or Gordos. Um, but I'd like to see this in a, a Corona format. This 40, would be really nice. 44 by 6. Format, yeah, yeah, and it's a great, great cigar, but uh, I like the smaller ring gauges, even though I sell a lot of large ring gauge cigars. Uh, but I'm not sure I would say there's kind of a resurgence, but that classic 50 count box, mm-hmm. as, you, as we're seeing, mm-hmm. um, there's quite a few brands that are bringing that back and have yes. had it back. Uh, Illusion's had the, their 50 count route out forever. Yeah. And that's a fantastic cigar. Yeah, as well. it, is a good, uh, it is a good cigar. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if there's a resurgence, and I just think it's a classic size mm-hmm. and a classic pack count of 50. So, yeah. Ro- you know, a short Robusto, if you will, the Rothschild. Mm-hmm. Um, I just always remember smoking the Punch way back when I first started. Mm. That's Double what Maduro. I smoked when I first started. Yeah, yeah. they're great the little cigar. I mean, at one point, way back, they were $3. Yeah. Or two seventy five. Three bucks, four Three bucks, bucks. Yeah. You know, so. you didn't have to pay a lot of money for right. well, a cigar. I don't know if I would say that. I mean, this is so much better than a punch. Well, I like them both, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. still like this a lot better than the punch. Yeah. Mm. The, the broad Even leaves... with you trying to be nice. <laughs> the broad leaf. <laughs> we're all in the same boat. <laughs> Grab your oar. Um, the broad leaf is as excellent as we all know. Connecticut mm-hmm. broad leaf is. Mm-hmm. It's got that sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. Um, this cigar reminds me a lot of cedar. It's another hallmark of the aroma. Yeah. yeah, they fresh cut their boxes a lot, yes, right? Yes, they do, yeah. Do they do that with the Wynwood Hills as uh, well? The, uh, the cedar it's that's in the box, and the layer of cedar on top is fresh right. cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah but that's those what boxes brings that are, special spice. Correct, yeah. On the A-Roll line, the, the cedar is it's cut and closed right into the box. It's designed to buy it via the box, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, and depending on how many you, you, know, you would enjoy, um, you could get away with keeping it just in that box. With a boveda or something, you know, yeah, without, sure. without having a humidor. So that's the idea of uh, cutting the cedar that day, mm. if you will. So that's awesome. But this has a the classic sheet on top. It curls. If you see the when you mm-hmm. open the box, it's in that. It's in as they're stored. Correct. Yeah. There's, yeah, it's like a shield over the cigars. Correct. Yep. And that's fresh cut. Fresh cut. Yeah. Nice. Um, now we all know 2020 was a really weird year, in a lot of different ways. Yes. For everybody. And yeah. the year and, of know, the lemon. Um, but thankfully, you know, for twins, it ended up being a great year. And it ended up being a great year for a lot of uh, uh, cigar shops in New Hampshire. Um, 2021 is getting underway. What do you think, Jim? I mean, do you think we're going to have another year like last year? Do you see the, the numbers continuing to, to go up? Or are you, see, are you thinking this is going to be more difficult where have you seen other stores uh, you think, know in I, new england or in the northeast are is everyone doing i think really everyone's good? for the most part's doing okay um in our in our area our territory i think everyone basically survived mm-hmm. it, so which is good you never yeah. want to see a small business go out of business at all right um i think we'll need a couple more months to see uh at least the first quarter to see what the numbers show obviously last year there was way more consumption because people were home Mm-hmm. or they were going to, when they could, after the curbside thing phased out, you'd find people that would go to lounges. So you're more apt, if you're sitting there for eight hours doing your work on your laptop, you're more apt to have more than one cigar. Mm-hmm. So the consumption definitely increased. Um, the issue right now is pro- mainly supply Right, is what's happening uh, now. So it will be interesting to see what happens. I think we need at least the first quarter to see what's going on um, because of, due to the back order situation. So, but I, I, have a, I have a pretty good feeling. I think by summer, once the, you know the vaccine is going to be going around, uh, people will have more confidence to go out. They're starting to loosen up things. I think we'll all try to do, you know, the distancing and all these things that they have mm-hmm. in place uh, everywhere now. Um, but I think we need definitely the first quarter to see what's going on. Is Christian excited about the vaccine? 
Uh, I believe he is. He's is the world's number one gerbophobe before yes. the pandemic. <laughs> yes. So I will say that. Uh, <laughs> well, he said it himself. Oh, I mean, you're not God. saying anything. He well, I had it on this well, show. We were traveling March that uh, last year. It was D Day. That was March 13th. It was a Thursday. They closed the whole world down, basically, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We had an interesting trip from New Hampshire to Rhode Island to Connecticut. He didn't make Connecticut. I made Connecticut. I had to shoot him back to Boston and fly back home. Uh, but I did complete the third event mm-hmm. uh, at the account, a great account in Connecticut, Mickey Blake's. So it worked out, but it went, it was, he. I think he was, he got nervous. People got nervous. Yeah. So I remember buying the last two sanitized wipes at 7-Eleven at like midnight. After I dropped him off at the hotel, yeah. he texted me, get me wipes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, happy Who's to be- he, Monk? <laughs> yeah. I'm just- wipes! I'm just- wipes! Yeah. I'm just a driver. <laughs> um, so, it worked out that I happened to be near a local 7-Eleven, and I went in, and they were there they were. So, I gave him them the next morning and drove them to uh, Logan, and then it got really weird, right, for everybody for yeah. quite a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. last April was crazy. April it was, was crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was a long, a long period for a lot of people, especially being cooped up. I got back out on the road like the second week of May, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So it was off almost two months, if you will, half right. of March, all of April and half of May. So two two right. months. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, you know... It, at that point, driving around, there was no travel. It was world record times down to the Cape, oh my gosh, through yeah. Boston. It was, it was, right. It was just really weird being mm. on the high. There was I nobody. Know, everything looked like a ghost. Nobody was, was on the road. I've I mean, never been able to get to Boston so fast in my life. Well, it's actually now. So a year later, basically, essentially a year later, it's all back. Mm-hmm. I mean, the traffic wise. I mean, I drive mm-hmm. enough to know. Yeah. That it's definitely back. I won't say it's as bad as it used to be, but it's noticeably back, if you mm-hmm. will. Mm -hmm. Uh, commute times but unfortunately the cities are very quiet boston's very quiet hartford's very quiet uh buffalo's quiet it's just what it is you know um but i think once summer comes along we'll uh hopefully we'll be in a better position and people will be outside and having fun and Mm mm-hmm well, certainly so. by then, Christian should have had his little booster shot, and then he could actually come and actually sit with us. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, he doesn't fly, he from he doesn't fly commercial, so. <laughs> no, no, he needs a plane with plenty of wipes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about cutting and cutters and stuff in just a minute, but before we get to that, uh, we put together a little segment actually talking about how to cut your cigar correctly using a bunch of different cutters, and we're going to play that for you right now. Right now. All right. We're here tonight to talk to you a little bit about cutting cutters, how to do it, how not to do it. And we have a little array of cutters here. Um, let's show these first. Can you see that, Dave? Can you see that? This is a Lotus Jaws cutter. It's got some nice serrated teeth to it that help it grip the uh, cap of the scar, and it cuts really, really nice. Uh, We've all seen these. The plastic cutters. I I think I've seen one here and there. The quintessential plastic cutter that stores sell. We have ours with the 724 logo on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Both of these are called guillotine cutters, double guillotine cutters to be precise, because there is a... (laughs) <laughs> guillotine at each end. That's how it works. See that pull? It's amazing. Yep. <clears throat> um, they are designed to cut a straight cut uh, across the top of your cigar. There's other types of cutters though. This is uh, a Lotus 11 millimeter bullet cut. Okay. And what this does is you insert the bullet into the head of the cigar and you gently twist like that and then pull it out and boom you have this nice little circle in this case an 11 millimeter circle cut out of the top of your cigar now with and then you uh, screw that back in the tobacco pops out, boom, there it goes. 
and if you take this, watch how this cuts, and this is what you want. You want just a little bit off the top. That's it. See that? See that there? That's all you need for a great cut on a cigar. Paul, you want to explain those cutters there? All right, so this is the Zykar XO. Now, this is a very interesting cutter. Uh, it's designed on a patent-pending planetary gear system. Uh, so there's five gears inside here, and the great thing about this is as you're pushing in to cut your cigar, the double guillotine blades go seamlessly right to cut it, and not one is lagging behind the other. So in some certain uh, guillotine cutters, as you're cutting, one side seems to close a little quicker than the other. This is designed so that both sides will clo close very evenly and give you a nice clean cut. This is the Calibri Dual. Now it's a both a deep V cut on one side and a straight cut on the other. And the great thing I love about these, this particular one, is uh, it does have a, it does allow the cigar to stop so you can cut it nice and cleanly. Actually, as a matter of fact, I'm going to cut this one for you. Just insert it, make sure it's nice and even, and then swiftly. Look how good that is, huh? And what's the point of that kind of cut, Paul? Well, it does, uh, the, the rule, the, sorry, the theory is that it does draw better, um, and you probably get a little bit less tobacco, although I, I personally don't really care much about bee cutters. I like the straight cut the best, but a lot of people like these because it does draw uh, the smoke a lot more evenly and a lot easier. On the other side here is your straight cut, and again, it does have a stopper, so as, you're, as you insert the cigar to cut, it just stops it, so all you have to do is just a nice clean cut, just enough to get the cold draw through. This is the Zykar V-Cut. Now this is designed to do the same thing. I'll cut this one here for you. See? Really nice. And these are all pretty much going to be, uh, can accept up to a 70 uh, ring gauge cigar. Right. And these plastic cutters, uh, you know, start what? Five, six bucks. Five bucks. Yeah, five million. bucks. You know, these cutters here are 30, I think. Yep. This is also 30. The dual is 75. 75. That's 50. 50. And this is the big kahuna at 100 bucks. Yeah. 101, uh, between 100 and 120, depending on the colors and the colors of the blade. Blades. Now, <clears throat> let me show you here how not to cut a cigar. Okay, we see people doing this. First of all, don't do this first. <laughs> and then take your cutter, or God forbid, somebody else's cutter, and then cut it. That's just gross and it's disgusting. Don't do that, okay? Another thing you don't wanna do is, and I've seen people do this, they just come, get down as far down as they can, and. <gasps> cut off the cigar. Look, you want to treat your cutter and your cutting cigars like you're a Jewish moyle, not some kind of jihadist warrior who's trying to make a statement. You do not want to do this to your cigar. Okay? See this? I just took off the cap of the cigar. The cap is what is holding the rest of the cigar together. So if you cut all that off, the cigar is going to end up unraveling. Don't do that. You want it to look like this, not like this. Yeah, remember folks, less is more. Less is more. Shave it. Don't behead it. Thus saith Pastor Padron. Thank you. Come again. All right, everybody, that is how you properly cut a cigar, or in a particular case, how you don't cut a cigar. We had fun putting that together, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's always fun doing that. Um, what's what's your favorite type of cuts? Jim, what, what kind of cut do you like to put on your cigar? Well, for a long time, I liked the V cut, especially that one that came out. It's actually, what's the one with the deep V? Yeah, the Calibri. Calibri. Calibri, yeah. When that came out, I, I I got one of those, and I still have it. It's one of the things I haven't lost. Um, <laughs> but 
I was doing that for a long time, and then believe it or not, Christian, he doesn't even use a cutter. He just pulls the end off. Yeah. So I find myself doing that. I'm like the carpenter that's got a hole in the wall at his house. I don't, I don't have a cutter on me. I don't have a lighter. <laughs> oh, <it's going> <laughs> I, I should, but um, lately, I mean, tonight I use that, but mm-hmm. I just I just been pinching the end and pulling it off. I don't think there's a particular right or wrong way. You never want to go, obviously, past the cap. Correct. Um, that would affect the cigar and have it start to unwrap the wrapper. But uh, I would say overall, definitely the V is something that I would probably use the most amount. Why do you, why do you like the V? Uh, I like the way it channels the smoke. Uh, yeah. Less and less, uh, sometimes in the end, less tobacco in your mouth. Okay. Um, and then there's times when the, you do a cross cut too as well, the V mm-hmm. both ways, um, mm. you know, for a little effect. That was a big Sean thing. Yeah, Sean does that a lot. The cross cut. Um, You know, I've seen people bite, bite. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's so many different ways, but the obviously you don't want the wrapper to unravel. Correct. So every cap is going to be a little bit different, especially if it's a triple cap. Um, So, but I would say overall, in all my history of smoking and enjoying cigars, probably the V cut is the one I use the most. Yeah. What about you, Bree? I'm I'm curious what what your favorite type of cut is. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna have to agree with that. Not just for myself, but even just seeing the prevalence of um, what people back when we were cutting cigars for people at the bar, what they would choose when you ask them, "Would you like a V cut or a straight cut?" Um, I I do feel like a lot of people opted for the V cut. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people weren't aware of what the V cut was and would just say straight cut. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's there are certain cigars where. Um, like a V cut might potentially be a little weird. I'm talking like the super, super tiny ones. Mm-hmm. But um, other than that, I do also like the way that V cuts channel smoke. I like the extra um, little bit of grab that you can get depending on the size of the cigar when you have a V cut as opposed to just an exposed straight. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to agree with that. So, so you prefer not to V cut a cafe court? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth now, Paul. I'm not gonna <laughs> Paul, what about yourself? What's your favorite kind of cut? I prefer the straight cut. And uh, if you, if, I'm not sure if, probably can't see this, but you see how very, very little is taken off the, the head here. Just enough to get the cold draw through. That's all I do for every single cigar, no matter what kind of cigar I'm smoking. Just a little bit off the top. That's all. And there's no tobacco coming out. I know the V cuts. You say that there's less tobacco going to go in your mouth because of that, but if you just take off a little bit off the top, you'll have the same effect. It will be just just that. Good point. Yeah. Just Balance. and and if you take off just a little bit, the smoke is going to travel through the cigar, and it's going to go through just a tiny hole, get a little bit more intensity of the flavors too. Ooh, so you intensify mm, the flavors. Yeah. I think with the V cut, it it tends to dissipate because it's such a wide cut that. And again, it's it's preference, but it's also if if you know what you're looking for for flavor, that's why I'd like just to take a little bit off the top. I yeah, I think actually the V cut, you end up <clears throat> percentage wise probably higher with uh, going too deep with it, especially that Calibri cutter, which I st- mm-hmm. it's a great cutter, but that that thing can go in fairly deep. Right. Um, so we just saw it the other day at the shop, and too too much of that will crack crack the head yeah some uh, of those v's almost go past yeah. the shoulder of the cigar yeah, exactly yeah yeah so maybe shallow mm-hmm. v as opposed to deep v <laughs> yeah <laughs> so dave shallow v deep v s punch i think dave teeth. looks like that type of guy who just gnaws on it you know yeah. <laughs> what i do is i take a match and i just shove it into the yeah. back there yeah it makes me remember some things and then i take it out and light it up <laughs> I started out with the with the V with the deep. This v, segment brought to you by the Lidlitz. Because <laughs> I have I have a Calibri, I have a Calibri double, and I started double. out with the V. The duo. The duo. Duo. And uh, but now I I've, I've become based on like what Paul just said. That's pretty much what I do is I just skin the slightest amount of t- mm-hmm. off the top, and I feel like I get the best draw from that, and. Um, I still think, however, that the V does do a better job of getting tobacco not in your mouth. So, hmm. but the uh, but yeah, I like the draw typically better. But it also depends on what I'm smoking. Mm. If I'm smoking a uh, Figurado, I'll typically do a V. If I'm smoking um, uh, a chisel, I'll punch it. Uh, so yeah, yep. Yeah. 
The chisel. Well, well that leads that leads to a great question. Are are there different sizes or vitolas of cigars that you cut differently? You obviously said the chisel. You decide to punch. Yeah. Uh, is there any kind of cigar, Paul, that you would do a different kind of cut to because of the size or shape? <clears throat> yes. The and we just just mentioned it a moment ago. The chisel. The chisel. Um, I will punch that, but I I don't like chisels to guys that 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 much. But when oh. I do have them. I will punch, and I will not only punch on one side, I'll punch the other two. Okay, so you punch it. Do you, punch now, do you punch straight through, or do you do a little punch on each side? A little punch on each side. A little punch on each side. Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right. What about, have you ever done that? Have you ever <laughs> Look at the treated different? Face. Well, uh, when you said have you punch, ever smoked the chiselito? punch straight through, I was like. That's a cigar. Chiselito. <laughs> Strong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm just confused by when you say punch straight through. I thought when well, you on a, punch on a, only went like a certain depth. You can. You can. Because the chisel ends up getting so thin, um, you could you can conceivably, if not, you know, all at once, you could go both ways, meet in the middle, and take out the center. I've seen people do that. Don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, you look very disturbed. Yeah, <laughs> it almost <laughs> seems like you're eradicating like fifty percent of the cigar. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Now, do you cut? different vitolas differently you've said you prefer yeah, the v i would say but so. do you treat different things differently like tip if i'm smoking a lancero chances mm -hmm. of me doing a v cut are pretty slim like mm -hmm. the lancero uh so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to oh. say I'll, I'll only really v cut something that's probably like you know if i have like a robusto if i have you know like a toro like something that's like a right, little so bit like a 50 more. ring gauge or bigger yeah. you're definitely going to be so, cut yeah. if that would be your preference yes. but you get into the 40s you get into the 30s i prefer like uh, paul said just kind of taking off the cap and calling it a day just skinning it yes just just moil like a jewish moil jewish moil not moil. jihadist no <laughs> jihadist warriors here all right jimmy boy do you uh I know you prefer the V, but do you or your finger, since you uh, forget stuff a lot. But uh, do you do you are there pr particular sizes that you cut differently on purpose? Well, if I'm going to smoke an 80 by six ogre, mm -hmm. mm, I'm okay, not, it's not that's like work. as big as your head. It's not going to work. Thank you. Um, it's not going to work with a V cutter. Mm -hmm. So I usually get a steak knife mm -hmm. and I just slice the very end of it off. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded uh, no. me of a pet peeve <laughs> on a larger, <laughs> a, lar a larger ring gauge cigar i would definitely go the guillotine or if you the straight cut the flat mm -hmm. cut yeah absolutely um just simply because the v cut's not going to work mm -hmm. i think the v it peters out uh toro even mm -hmm. for a 60 by six it's kind of a bit much trying yeah. to get a v cut into it but um yeah. smaller ring gauge definitely just just pick the end off yeah. Sure, sure. Do you guys do you have a favorite cutter? Yes. So, Dave has the cutter that somebody gave him that he thinks looks really cool. What's yeah. what kind of cutter is that? This is a you know a straight cut. It almost mimics like the jaws. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Same design. Same. Does it have the the uh, serrated? Edges? Not serrated. Nope. Okay. Got some nice weight to it though. Yeah, it does, yeah, it does yeah. have nice weight to yeah. it. But you don't know what brand that is? Yeah, it's a uh, cigar loon. Cigar what? Loon. It's loon. L o o n g. Loon. 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 Cigar loon. Mm. Cigar yeah. loon. Well, That's fitting, huh? Yeah, we're in. Uh, okay. Yeah. We we all yeah. Bunch Paul, of loons. Paul Paul likes the seven twenty four store cutter. Shameless plug. Yep. It's just a just a basic cutter. I've got God knows how many floating around the house, you know, in my car, or whatever. But uh, it it does exactly what I want it to do, and nothing more, and nothing, nothing less. less. Yeah, for me, the the uh, Lotus Jaws, the Jaws is my favorite cutter. It's got uh, some serrations on the. Do you see the serration? You see the little serration there? Fancy. I believe it sharpens and, itself, oh, right? And, yeah, yeah, and it uh, it is so sharp and it just cuts cigars like butter Bye. it's great i i do prefer the s cut myself straight cut and this does a amazing job um there are cigars that i will cut differently I, I'll, I'll use a, a v cut um occasionally on a neanderthal which has like a flat 
head yeah, to it. Yeah, it's really hard. So straight cut. you really have to know what you're doing, or have a very sharp cutter to give that a good straight cut. So a V or even the cross cut, you know, yeah, it works great to... on that cigar. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, I've I've tried cutting the uh, the Neanderthal with the Lotus Jaws, and it did a fantastic job. Oh it. yes, yeah. it does. So. If you yeah, you have to you have to pay. Yep. It's like playing Operation. But if you <laughs> like stuff like that, it's Gotta have very, a steady very hand. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a do you have a favorite cutter? You know, I do, and I can't really recall if it was a Zycar. Um, I believe one of the varieties of that type of cutter mm -hmm. was branded by Rocky Patel, but um it is a V cut and it's you'll know what I'm talking about. It's yeah. the one that has a very smooth V cut. It's almost yeah. like hefty. And you very hit the heavy. little button and it punches out yes. the top. Yes, yes. That's that's I Calibri just love how makes they it feel. for them. Like they just I feel like they give a very clean straight cut i like that they bounce back they spring out all the extra tobacco from the cut mm -hmm. it's wonderful look mm -hmm. at you stacking dimes over there yeah. showing off that is the hallmark of the windwood that these is... cigars burn unbelievable mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the very inception that we got brought these in that's inception. one of the things your hair is very it's I like know. mimicking the cigar standing <laughs> straight up like that it's about straight the same up. height yeah. I don't care. it's amazing <laughs> you want some it's of my a, hair gel Jim it's the same color too <laughs> I still got my hair see, see that's the deal right yeah so yeah that's good are, not everyone can say that your, uh, <laughs> <home age. laughs> I can't see that they always <laughs> I have my hair right mm -hmm. it's all right mm -hmm. Kurt has his beard mm -hmm. but yeah. uh no let me look at the burn there's there's the yeah. uh is the art form of the fine people of Honduras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I It mean, is a skill to roll a cigar. Yeah. Looking around at all of us, Wait, the construction it's... seems to be really good on everybody's cigar. The burn's going great. Everybody's ash is uh, behaving. Ashy. It's not It's not at all, uh, well, unless you're Bree. Yeah, it's Bree's not, making it's, a mess here. It's not we'll at all. I only made one mess, to be fair. We'll, we'll let it fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> ash is not. I started shaking my cigar everywhere. <laughs> it's it's an ashen. Yeah. It's not a flaky ash or anything like that. It's nice and standing on there. Very, very good. Um, this is something else Paul kind of brought up here. Uh -oh. you know, do, how many cutters do you have? <laughs> I lost count. To be honest you lost with you. count. Well, what cutter don't I mean, I, well, I, I mean, I got a bunch of these, you know, kicking around. Um, yeah. I have a uh, an old... Uh, uh, not, it's not a double guillotine. It's just a single guillotine that oh, I got. Wow. A, I got. A, I think I got an old cigar shop in Manchester that's no longer there. Mm -hmm. A freebie, and uh, that, believe it or not, it's after all these years, it still can cut my cigar. So it just stays like that. And whoop, nice. you know, look at yeah. that. So, but other than that, it's just just a basic double uh, double guillotine cutter is mm. what I have. It's one one of the the things about being in the business. You end up with a lot of cutters, whether yeah. whether you like it or not. You know, yeah. whether you, you know. Now, Dave, do you have, do you have a bunch of cutters? I have, I have five. You have, I have five. A, I have a you Rocky have a... Patel one with a, with a, a back. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you know, it's a straight cut, but it's a, it's got a back. It's called a perfect cut cutter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have uh, one that I just got from uh, Adam from Altidus. The, uh, um, the butterfly. Yeah, the, the butterfly. butterfly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I have this beauty given to me by Heather. And then I have my Calibri Duo. I don't even have it with you. Yep. So is that four or five? Or does the, the Duo oh, count as... Oh, and the punch. As, yes. And the pen say. punch. Yep. And the you, pen don't, punch. you don't have one of these? Nope. <laughs> Paul? It's not a company man. I don't know. I I have no idea how many cutters I have. Um... I can't find any of mine. You can't find any of <laughs> yours. <laughs> well, you're, use other people's. You're not. Yeah, exactly. you're, you're not alone. Right. As a matter of fact, one of one of my one of my big pet peeves, you know, let, and let's talk a little bit about uh, you know, my cigar confessions, is, is that so? I, I can't believe how many people regularly come to Twins. I'm not talking people who just kind of oh look, it's a cigar shop. Let's go in and you know maybe they weren't planning on having a cigar. I'm talking about the people who are there all the time and who almost never have their cutter with them and unlike jimmy don't think oh i've got fingernails you know i can't you know they they don't think and so they're constantly asking can i borrow your cutter can i borrow your cutter do you have a cutter i can borrow you know and i don't get it that. i don't get it if you were going to a cigar lounge to enjoy a cigar you know and you own cutters 
And these people I'm thinking, I'm not talking about people who don't own cutters. I'm talking about people who have cutters. But they never think to bring them with them. What's up with that? What's up with that, Bree? I don't know, but we're encountering it a whole lot now with this whole COVID thing. Like, now that we're not cutting people's cigars, we don't have public cutters. Mm. You, It's unbelievable. I would anyways. say probably mm. about 90%. Of people yeah. that come in end up having really? either buy a cutter off of us or borrow someone else's at the bar. <laughs> I know, and it's like I remember. I remember. Oh uh, shit! Uh, I had to be a couple of months ago. Now I was over at London Dairy working a Saturday evening with with uh, Nick, and a customer uh, asked if he could borrow Nick's cutter because there was no community cutter. Nick, being the stand up guy that he was, gave him his cutter. The guy took his cigar, stuck it into oh. his mouth, spun it around, yep. and then cut the cigar. Bro. And then handed the cutter back, and Nick said, no, no, it's yours now. <laughs> and and the Can guy was like, are you saying it? that? Are you saying that because I put it in my mouth? Yes. <laughs> it's your cutter. Right. Just take it. Just take it. And he did. And he took the cutter. But I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And wow. it's just, it's. Uh, it's habit. I, I mean, I thinking. guess that's what it is. You know, thinking. if it's your if it's your cutter and you want to do that, okay. I I wouldn't even want to get into the habit of that. If you have a good sharp cutter, mm -hmm. there's no reason to put the cigar in your mouth first. I mean, the reason to do that is to kind of get the tobacco a little bit moist, so it's a little bit easier to cut, not so dry. But if you're getting your cigar at a reputable shop, like Twins, you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about doing that. Worst case, dip it in your whiskey and then cut it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that would even be better. Yeah. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. Jim, Jim. What's what's one of your big uh, cigar pet peeves? My biggest pet peeve is when someone calls a cigar a stick. Why is that? Because a cigar, that is so common. A cigar is not a stick. A cigar is a cigar. A stick is a stick. What about a stogie? A stogie? Yeah. Let well, that slide. But. I, that, that's my probably my biggest pet peeve. I, I I've never, to my knowledge, remember calling a cigar a stick, and I think that it takes away from uh, what actually goes on to make a cigar. As we mm. know, it's a three to four year process by the time they're even in a box to where we are smoking them. Right. Uh, I have a huge respect for the people that work hard to make the cigars from everyone on the farm. So to to put it out as a as slang is it, to me is derogatory. Mm. I don't think it's done intentionally. Or no. People are trying to be whatever about it. But I would say definitely I cringe when I hear it's a good stick. Because <laughs> I don't smoke sticks. Oh, you don't? I smoke cigars. This is a great stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, w I would say that. Stick I mean, that in your on, a, on the retail, though, when I was in retail, mm. the biggest peppy you ever had, someone would take the cigar and just rub their nose under it. And they oh. Obviously, you just bought it. So yeah. uh, whether you smoke it or not. but. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not, you know, some people don't know. I mean, it's and then you're. That's the job to educate them and just say, sure. hey, listen, you know, you, you know, you see people do that in supermarkets with fruit. They're rubbing it all over their face and stuff. It's like, what the hell are you doing? It's an apple. Buy yeah. it or you own it now. You know what I mean? And you see people put it back though. I mean, that's yeah, put it back. That's ridiculous. You know what I mean? I mean, especially now today too, right? Thinking the produce. People squeeze in and everything, and is it fresh? And uh, well, we don't funny, even know we're but, doing it. But you're know? right. I mean, people don't, don't know. I we mean, don't I know had... we're. I, it's almost it, a habit, if you will. You, we don't know. I mean, you pick up a – most of the fruit's picked way early anyways, and mm -hmm. it's not even ripe when it's at the store. So you go to, to pick up a pear, and it's like a baseball. Yeah. But you picked <laughs> it up. So do you keep it, or do you put it back? I mean – Well, I mean, if you pick it up, I mean, it's one thing. To put it on uh, your nose – Right, and, right. You know, or, or that's different. Yeah. You know, getting your – getting your lick. Rubbing the cigar under the nose is just yeah. – it's just horrendous, yeah. Almost yeah. like and if you're going to keep it, and swim, that's fine. If you want to, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I've seen people put, you know, they're like, they they have this whole process to it, which tells me they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, you know, <laughs> but, but you're right. I mean, yeah, there there is a lot of, when you st yeah, see it, you have to take the time to educate. Not, you know. You know, I remember, it, it was funny, a person who's actually going after a, a CLE Connecticut cigar, and they're trying to, to see if it was fresh. Yeah. You know? And they were feeling the cigar all over the place. You know, it's like, you know, looking for knots. all up and down. And they, they squeezed the head and the head popped off. Oh, no. Yeah. And I, I, I was like, what are, you, what are you doing? 
Right. And and he, oh, I'm trying to see what the if the cigar. I don't know if this cigar is good. The head just popped off. I said, well, you just you know, you don't literally squeeze popped the off. Don't squeeze the Charmin. Right. And then I, but I took the time to then educate him about how you can. Tell yeah, us if a, a cigar a quick, is, is fresh yeah, you and squeeze, squeeze. You give it a, you know, and and squeeze the, the metal. Give give the foot. Give yeah, the give the foot a little all. squeeze, and little, if you yeah. see it bounce back, you know, yeah, you, you get a little give, a little bounce back. Then then you know it's good. If it crackles, it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> if your fingers are moist afterwards, it's probably too damp. Right, right. But but you never never do that to the head of the cigar. Don't no. do it to the body of the cigar because no. yeah. you can crack everything well, you, you shouldn't touch it where someone's going to put it in their mouth anyway yeah. Yeah. Right, right 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 and that's a big thing now it's always should have not a big thing but i mean it should have been but now look at covid and and, and then there's more attention to that mm -hmm. you know as far because like i said so, sometimes you don't even know i mean that you're doing it right you're just subconsciously just touching everything on the thing and then you put it back <laughs> it's habit yeah, yeah. i mean so I used equate, to doing like it. i just said i equate it to the produce in a supermarket yeah well a lot of uh, places now people yeah. i mean you don't eat the banana peel i guess that's one thing i mean right an orange you know, you know what i don't know anyone is eating an orange peel but Thick. even the chemicals Thick. that are on it yeah. uh, and so forth but i don't know <laughs> Well, does Nick eat orange peels? Well, no, but he. Uh, so we we have to. Peel, I wouldn't doubt it. Well, listen to this. So we have to peel the orange skin to make our old fashioned. So what happens is we end oh, up this with is true on the an cocktail orange side. that yeah. has no skin. It just has rind all right. over it, but the orange inside is still intact. So one day Nick saw Kendra throwing out the orange, and he goes, "Wait, I'll eat that." And so we've made a habit of saving our peeled oranges for Nick. You know, you learn so much every day and then there's more about Nick. Yeah. yeah. You never knew him Dude, Nick has been removed from the panel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, while we're on that subject, what's our final uh, verdict here on uh, this beautiful cigar, The Unhidden? That's fantastic. Yes, it actually is very fantastic. This has been a, a, a very, very smooth uh, earthy, uh, cedar sweet, mm -hmm. but with the uh, with a smuggler's notch maple straight mm -hmm. Kentucky bourbon whiskey, it's actually to me bringing out a little bit of an unsweetened chocolate flavor too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it's I think mm -hmm. it's a very good complementary pairing. Next time you open a bundle to refill the shelf because they sell like wildfire, stick it up your nose. Honestly, <laughs> don't stick your nose in it. But when you crack the bundle, the cellophane, and you and you nose it, it smells. Exactly like chocolate. Yep, exactly. And that's the Broadleaf. Like, that's broadleaf. the Broadleaf. Yeah, I love Broadleaf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite rappers. Yeah. Too. yeah. So that's what I. That, that's the biggest thing I get out of it. Anytime I crack a bundle. Dave, like what it. do you, what do you think about the cigar? Um, I'm getting a a lot of sweet cedar from it. My palate is a little rough today. Mm. So. <laughs> Must have been them pepperoni <laughs> pizza. Well, no, I had a, had a bit of a sinus headache <laughs> last night. <clears throat> oh. So. And then I, I took, you know, some ibuprofen, and that kind of, like, messed up my palate a little bit. I'm not getting as much as I usually do. It's probably from the time you ate that ghost pepper. Mm. <laughs> hey, but he got 20 bucks. Yeah, I got 20 bucks, yeah. Filled, filled my tank. And he also emptied your tank. He almost <laughs> emptied it. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. I did. There yeah. we go. Yes, I did. He looked about as green as Grogu over Literal. there. Literal. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get it straight, it's Baby Yoda. Yoda. It's Grogu. No, that's his See, name. When Yoda died, he didn't die. He went to the other area. Um, the big force in the sky. Yes, he did. <laughs> He's all-powerful Jedi. Um, he was 900 years old. So if I'm not mistaken, this is when he was around 50 or 100? He was a, no? he was a, he was a youngling. Backwards? But he was a youngling back when uh, uh, Anakin was training. Mm -hmm. So ah, him okay. and Anakin are actually the same age. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. All yeah. right. I did not know that. Yeah. But he's 50 yeah. right now. Fun, useless Star Wars facts brought to you by not just Blue. Well, George Show. Lucas sold it for $4.2 billion to Disney, and they've already made that back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe George is kicking himself, or he's still laughing all the way. Yeah, George is still very much involved. It's only yeah. the beginning, yeah. too. They're coming out with multiple. Yeah, yeah. what a great show, though. The that show was fantastic. Yeah, that yeah. show was really good. The production <laughs> value is insane. Man. Yeah, and it tied in so many things. Yeah. Just goes to show you what happens yeah. when you put a Marvel guy in charge of it. All of a sudden, yeah. they and, and they didn't sell any of those, right? <laughs> they didn't sell that doll. No one bought any of those for Christmas. Are you kidding? No. Those no, sold I, out. I know. I know. It's like nobody <laughs> bought Baby Yoda in 2020. No. <laughs> Maybe they'll bring back That's Toys R Us, hopefully, because they used to have about three aisles of Star Wars. Yeah, mm. right. 
Yep. Now, Bree, what do you think of this uh, unhinged? I think that there's a theme between uh, the whiskey and the cigar, just in the sense that uh, both of these, the cigar and the whiskey, have that common concept of don't judge a book by its cover. Because mm-hmm. looking at this cigar, I was expecting it to be like pretty bold like it not that it's not bold but i was expecting it to be very peppery right um like where i get to the end and i almost have like you know a lot of pepper on my palate um but so far all i'm getting is um you know that sweet cedar with just the right amount of pepper that kind of builds throughout the smoke and Mm -hmm. just like the whiskey you look at it and you expect it to be overly sweet a little bit overpowering but it it pretty much just tastes like um a well put together whiskey with slight hints of maple that complement the cigar very well and kind of give you um, that very like mild but enjoyable combination. Yeah. You're welcome, Brie. <laughs> <Thank> you <all. laughs> um yeah, I'll be honest. I I'm not picking up cedar on this at all. <gasps> no? I I I get earth i get cocoa i get lots of real nice rich flavors to it um maybe it's the whiskey that's that's masking it for me but you know that that sweet earthy cocoa you know note that's what i'm getting there's a little bit of spice on the retrohale for me it's a really enjoyable cigar and um i think the unhinged is my favorite in the winwood series um it is a fantastic short cigar. And again, the price is right. And, yeah. you know, we've been at it for just about an hour and we're just finishing just up. About, so yeah. you think you're getting this little Rothschild that's going to be gone in like 20 minutes. No, mm-hmm. it's rolled really well and it lasts a good long time. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? Another factor about the roll, too, is like I feel like this is the kind of cigar where even if you cut a little bit too far, the construction of the cap is so. Uh, like compact that the it stays intact yeah you know like even if you just look at the cigar at the head all of the tobacco is perfectly packed there's no flaking there's no mm-hmm. shattering good point yeah it's good and you're not getting any tobacco in your mouth either no are tobacco, you? Well, See? Tobacco. No. lotus jaws baby no tobacco. lotus jaws <laughs> lotus jaws <laughs> snippy 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 that's right cut to the chase we're looking at a little snippy snippy not mm-hmm. a whack whack Okay, Uh, that's it for this segment. Hold on. We're going to be back in about five minutes, and we will be looking at Gawith Hogarth's Brown Boogie. We'll be right back. Now. Paul here is going to show you how to properly light a cigar. Okay, so what I do is a, it's a two-step process. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to tee it up or toast the cigar. All right, now there's a couple of ways you can toast the cigar. What, are we, what I notice a lot of people do is they'll take the cigar, they'll take their lighter, they'll ignite it, and they'll go ahead and move the lighter so that it's touching the tobacco, touching the, the, uh, the footing here, until it's properly toasted. What I do is I actually hold the lighter steady and I'll take the cigar and I'll get it just over the light until it starts to ignite and then I'll just rotate it. And what I'm doing here is I'm adhering the wrapper to the binder. I'm just sealing it up. That's amazing, Paul. Yeah. You're doing such a great job. Toasty! So now it's toasted. Now comes the light. And what I do is I'll start off and I'll do quarter turns. All right, so ignite, ignite your lighter. Again, you want to keep the cigar just above the light. That's the hottest part of the flame, just until you can see it ignite. And you see how he's pulling the lighter back as he's doing it. Perfect, that's what you want. This will be, you'll be successful every time if you do that. Now, a lot of what I see, let's talk about how not to do this, all right? First off, I see people do it all the time. I know it's Paul and I did not do this. They take their, they take their torch lighter and they get right up here and they go like this. (sighs) 
See, now people like doing that because they're impatient. They want to just get right to the tobacco. They want to get to the lighting. <clears throat> it's like lighting is the least favorite thing for them to do. But if you look at um, this, you can see how the tobacco has been scorched at the bottom by doing that with a torch. That changes the flavor of the cigar. So if I uh, take a draw on this one, and I get some nice wood notes, I get a little bit of spice. If I do the same with this one, I'm getting a lot of char. I can actually taste the burned tobacco. <clears throat> so you can really, really impact how your cigar is going to perform for the rest of the time based on how you light it up front. Now, another thing that people do wrong is they don't bother with the whole toasting thing. And they just kind of hold it up to the face. And again, with the torch, and then they get frustrated. What the fuck did he say? And then they end up with something like this, where it is half lit, okay? That's gonna be actually a, hard to correct because, you know, the tobacco is not gonna taste right because only half the cigar is lit. If you don't take the time to evenly light the cigar right up front, it's gonna burn funny, it's gonna taste funny. So, it is really important to take the time to do your cigar right. Toast it like you're toasting a marshmallow, and then do the light like you saw Paul and I do it. If you like soft flame, it's going to take a little bit longer. If you like a torch like Paul does, it's still going to take maybe longer than you thought, but you will really appreciate it when you take the time to light your cigar correctly. Right? I just I, I I think of it as when I'm when I'm smoking meat you want to do it low and slow low flame mm, you don't, low and slow you don't want to you don't want a heavy flame you want to keep it just above the light again that's the hottest part of the flame is just above it and when you start to see the tobacco start to uh, ignite that's all you need and as long as you do the, the turns after you toast it um, your cigar should be lit properly and you'll enjoy it that much more. Thank you. Come again. All rise. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there. Now we move to our pipe tobacco review. And we are smoking Gawith and Hogarth's Brown Bogey. And from the TobaccoReviews.com uh, site, uh, we read this about it. This is a dark-fired and dark-air-cured twist, also known as Happy Bogey, an old-fashioned rope tobacco that provides a stout smoke with high nicotine content. Oh boy. All our <laughs> twist tobacco varieties are manufactured by the same spinning process using dark-fired wrapper leaves. The filler is, again, predominantly dark-fired leaf with the addition of a small percentage of dark-air-cured Indian leaf. They are, therefore strong tobaccos and then it has a little, in a little note section which i think is stuff that was previously put on the bags or on the tins when this stuff was made um it isn't on the bags anymore uh this gawith and hogarth and co dark fired and air cured twist is also known as happy bogey this brown twist is a bit stronger than the black twist and is made to slice into coins for smoking or small plugs for chewing as done by many sailors and this tobacco uh comes in the form of a rope and uh, was actually uh manufactured specifically for um passage on ships and stuff like that sailors would take it with them it could be stored in a relatively small space not much of it would be exposed to the air because uh, most of the tobacco is in the core of the rope and um, <clears throat> so it, they would 
cut off when they were on the ship. They would cut off a piece and chew it, use it as chewing tobacco, because lighting a fire on a big wooden boat out at sea is probably a bad idea. <laughs> this is true. And uh, when they were in port, they would make thinner slices <laughs> called flakes, rub them out, put them into their pipe, and smoke it. But being that sailors are all strong, they need some strong stuff to help them stay awake. And that's what this stuff was for. And uh, we are pairing the same whiskey with this, right? This is the, uh, what's the name of it again? Smuggler's, Smuggler's Notch, Notch Maple Straight Kentucky Bourbon Whiskey. How do you remember that? I don't know. You're amazing, Paul. <laughs> You're my Paul, idol. Paul knows his spirit. I remember what I love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> So uh, we're going to light this up here. How many people have their pipes going already? Oh, mm. me, I do. Now, um, it's fantastic. we're going we're gonna to show you a little uh, video of how we prep this tobacco. Mm. You'll see the rope uh-huh. and stuff in just a minute. But before we get to that, before. Um, yes, before, mm-hmm. um, I'd like to know what people's initial people's. reaction is to the tobacco and to the pairing here with the uh, maple whiskey. And we'll start with you, Dave. <gasps> Mm. A lot of, a lot of earth. A little bit of, uh, I want to say a slight underlying amount of like a mesquite kind of barbecueish, um, <laughs> smooth. It's very smoky. Obviously, you can tell by the volumes of smoke going through everywhere. And even though we had this out <laughs> for hours, it still needs a little bit of re lighty lighty. Yes, it does. Yeah, I cut this tobacco for us at the beginning of the day and let it sit out so that it would dry enough for us to smoke tonight. Mm. But uh, rope tobacco is notorious for holding its moisture. So even now, it may take some time to uh, really catch. Paul, what are you picking up? Uh, smoky, uh, sorry, uh, smoky mesquite, uh, leather, a little bit of sweetness. Great spice though. Mm-hmm. In the retro. Ooh. Yeah, the retro is really, really rich. This is a uh, this is a fantastic tobacco. How supply. do you think it pairs with your uh, whiskey? I think it pairs very, very good. Again, another complimentary pairing. I think the uh, it's bringing out a little bit more of the smoky mesquite to me. Mm. It's transcendent. <laughs> is it transcendent, Paul? Or yeah, it, it, just... it, no, it it is transcendent. Mm. Uh, Bree, have you been able to get yours started? Yeah, so I, before um, sipping my whiskey with it, I puffed on it a few times, and I, I'm i not sure if my bowl is just, I haven't used my bowl in a while, but um, I got very, very, very strong, like, milk cocoa notes from the aroma. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it was it was really interesting. It was almost like there was, like, melted chocolate in my bowl, but on the actual retrohale, I did get a lot of that mesquite, and mm-hmm. with the whiskey... Um, it balanced out very well because I think the maple kind of um, the maple notes in the whiskey kind of toned down the cocoa undertones I was getting mm-hmm. and brought out more of the smokiness. So really enjoyable so far. Jim, you are a pipe guy too. We're glad that you like to hang around with us and and smoke Absolutely. the pipe with us when he remembers um, to bring it. Yes, surrounded by the experts here. Yeah, so I appreciate that. Um, brown bread. Brown bread. Brown bread. Brown bread. A little bit of sweetness there. Um, Not to be confused with wheat bread. It's got a, no, it's got a pretty good kick to it, Mm -hmm. too, as well. Yep. There's definitely some, uh, this is a a, a full body tobacco. It's outstanding. Right from the first puff. Mm -hmm. I I, I don't think I've ever actually enjoyed this before. So this is a nice treat. um, I'm probably going to get some too as well. Yeah, it's, it's excellent. excellent. Yeah, mm. excellent. Well, and you know more about it than I do. This is a world famous brand, obviously, and and, and producer. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, you know, Gawath Hogarth. You know, their roots date back to the uh, 1790s. Wow. And uh, Old Testament. The machines that they use to make this rope to spin this tobacco date back to 1792. No kidding. And they have not been able to find modern machinery that does the same things to the tobacco. So these machines, which are on the National Registry of Historic, you know, machinery over in England where this stuff is made, are the oldest things on that on those lists that are still in use on a daily oh. basis to make this tobacco. And that's one of the things I love about the um uh 
a tobacco like this is that you're you're smoking something that has literally been made like this and on the same machine for hundreds of years for yeah. centuries yeah. you know and and the the history of that you know and and preparing it the way that you know you'd have to do it it's just amazing but anyway uh while we're smoking here and getting some more notes together uh let's show you this video on how to prep rope tobacco all right i have here some of the brown boogie that we are going to be smoking tonight it is a rope tobacco and this is a great tobacco to talk about uh prep with because there is so much prep to do with this tobacco here um some tobacco comes in ribbon form there's really not much prep work that that takes you just take it out and maybe if it's wet you let some uh dry out for a little bit maybe five minutes ten minutes before you put it in for something like this or something like a plug you have a little bit more work to do and with a tobacco like this what you do is you literally have to cut it yourself before you do it and so i like to go small here now i've let this stuff kind of dry out during the day because i'm thinking we may need some to smoke tonight okay you cut it like that you can even if you want um take a pair of scissors to it just like that and cut it like that and you end up with these little coins of tobacco, okay, like that. And the next thing you need to do, you know, the outside band of that, you could hear, and maybe you can see, was a little bit dry. But what's inside is still very moist to the touch. And if you unravel it a little bit, you see what's in here. Because this is spun tobacco. So you've got these longer pieces that were actually in the rope there. And what you need to do is rub these out a little bit just on a cutting board or any kind of flat surface. You can even use a piece of paper if you're using scissors. <clears throat> I wouldn't use a knife just on top of a piece of paper. <laughs> but just break up those coins into ribbon. And you can kind of see again, I like taking these apart and showing just how long some of this stuff is folded up in there. long pieces of tobacco so you're basically taking it back out to a ribbon <clears throat> okay and then <clears throat> with a rope tobacco like this um, this is actually still maybe a little bit too moist so might what you might want to do is just let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes maybe even half an hour before you put it into your pipe and then you would pack it just like you would anything else but that is how you prepare rope tobacco. All right, there you go. That's how we did it. That's what it looks like. Um, this is some really good stuff. Now, you know, watching the, the video there, you know, you, rope tobacco obviously takes some prep time to it. You actually have to cut it up and prepare it. If you're using a plug, it's the same kind of thing. You have to make slices of it yourself, or if it's a crumble cake you have to you know pull off bits of the cake and and rub it out and stuff like that uh, obviously there's tobacco like ribbons or shags where there's really no prep time to it, it unless you're going to take some to dry it out or get ready for you uh, for your pipe um, when you are smoking a pipe do you gravitate towards tobaccos that are minimal effort to get into your pipe or 
does that matter to you? You go back and forth, or do you maybe even prefer the tobaccos that take a little bit of work? And that's that's that process is just something that you really enjoy, and so you prefer doing that more than, like, say, a ribbon tobacco or something like that. It's real for me. It's just really what I'm in the mood for. The process doesn't make a difference to me. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm in the mood for some Black Irish X, I'm going to take the time it takes to like prepare it and do it. Because, uh, you know, it's part of the anticipation of it. And yeah. the experience. Yeah. 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 Because the pipe, obviously, it's relaxing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, some people have them hanging out of their mouth all day. But mm-hmm. overall, I equate it to just to be able to relax. It so I fun. wouldn't mind okay. fooling around with the rope or rubbing it out. However, yeah. or however, however it takes to, you know, prep it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think some of the best tobacco that I personally have smoked have been the ones that you actually have to take the time to cut. So like the spark plug, yeah, mm. the spark cake, plug. that 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 brownie cake, um, uh, the plug, mm-hmm. and the uh, all, the Gawith Hogas, you know, brown Irish X and black Irish X, that you have to kind of you have to cut and you have to let it sit out for a little bit of time to dry out. Those are the ones that I find are the ones that I gravitate towards. Mm. And uh, I, I don't smoke pipes that often, but when I do, I prefer the the ones that have the greatest flavor. Uh, the more intense ones, uh, like I just I just talked about. So that's the ones I would really. I have no problem spending the time to do that. Yeah. No, I know that this is all kind of you know. You're probably the newest pipe smoker among us, but you've had you know on the show you've you've had you know ribbon tobacco. You know, just open the tin, take it, put it in the pipe. This was something you know. I actually took about 10 minutes to cut this up early in the morning let it mm-hmm. you know let it sit out in the sun out. basically baked it <laughs> so because go with hogarth you know half of what you're buying is water <laughs> basically yeah. you got to get rid of that because really? of course that moist? wet mm. things don't oh, burn yeah. oh. oh my goodness oh wow and uh then you, you you but here we are at the end of the day and this is a really enjoyable thing and oh. you know for me um I I enjoy that anticipation, that kind of prep. You know, almost like you're making a, you know, you, you, when you get it's a like crock making pot, an apple pie, get man. a yeah. crock pot going in the morning, putting everything together, and, and then thinking about it all day. That when you come oh, home, yeah. you can have a yeah. great yeah. dinner. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That that's kind of what I get with these tobaccos that take a little bit more time and effort to to get to. Um, but what what's been your experience? Do you have a preference so far of of what we've had or yeah well i mean i i'm i think a firm believer in like go big or go home so like like dave said like if there's an enjoyable pipe tobacco i'm gonna go for that one no Mm -hmm. matter what i feel like smoking pipe there is like a lot more that goes into it as is like Mm -hmm. you know with just like packing it keeping it lit like the whole process so it's like you might as well um experiment with some of these pipe tobaccos that take like a tiny bit more time to prepare. Mm. I, I don't think there's anything wrong at all with um going, I'm not going to be held back from buying a pipe tobacco that takes a little bit more time to prep than mm-hmm. I would any other pipe tobacco. Because as it is, if I'm dedicating the time to smoke my pipe, then I'm going to put in it whatever is going to be the most enjoyable and unique. Sure. You know, and for me, you know, I, I love the fact of, you know, that, Pipe smoking allows you to kind of become part of the process, mm-hmm. you know, with a cigar, you know, like the, the unhinged, you know, I'm taking Christian's final work and snipping it <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then lighting it up and, it, and, I mean, and, en- and enjoying it, you know, and, and, you know, but I'm really enjoying what Christian has produced and put out there. And when it comes to pipe tobacco, especially a, you know, a rope or something where you're, you're actually more involved with repairing, um, you're becoming part of the process too. You're taking somebody's finished work and and making it yours by cutting it as thick or as thin as you want, rubbing it out or leaving it in chunks or or leaving it in little uh, coin size slices or maybe half and half. You know, it, you get to decide how it ends up in your bowl. You get to decide how it's packed. You get to decide how much of your bowl you're packing. And so you, you have, by the time you get through with it, you've done something and so you're now part of the thing that you're enjoying and i really like that i like being able to be part of the process that way Mm -hmm. Mm. amen but i really think paul taking another drink here Mm. paul is perfect pairing i really think Mm -hmm. this is a perfect pairing paul 
the the maple in that whiskey just you know complements the little bit of sweetness that's in the right. background and mm -hmm. with the virginias here uh and these are <coughs> dark fired virginias that make up this rope so there is that natural sweetness to the virginias but they've also been you know smoked so there's that smokiness that nuttiness that we're tasting and um it just brings out more of that yeah, sweetness in the virginia when i've smoked this before it's been very like mesquite forward mm -hmm. and now it's like the sweet is forward yeah. um and it's and it's an amazing uh difference mm. when i was when i was thinking about the pairing and, and why, why i chose this particular uh bourbon was realistically what was on my mind was the tobacco tonight mm. uh the cigar i thought went very very well with it with this but this is even more so uh, a complimentary pairing. Mm. Thank you for doing your job, Paul. Yeah. Sweet spice, on the sweet spice. <laughs> sweet spice. Sweet spice. Paul. <laughs> not, to be <laughs> not to be confused with old spice. <laughs> now that's a high five. Uh, right? Come on. I'll drink to that. That's oh, a high five. Can we high five today? Uh, we high five. The chairs too. <laughs> Paul, Cheers. Uh, do you have a? Uh, is Paul blowing smoke? I do. Segment for us tonight. <laughs> so, blowing smoke is short for blowing smoke up your backside <laughs> or your arse, which is a figure of speech, but it is also a literal one. And we have to a ask whether you're blowing, Correct. blowing smoke, smoke Correct. or <laughs> just blowing smoke or not just blowing smoke. Mm. Correct. Okay. Mm. Am I blowing smoke? Up your ass or? Yeah. Blowing <laughs> smoke. Or out. Arch. Arch. Blowing smoke Arch. is Arch. short for blowing smoke up your backside, which is a figure of speech. Mm. But it is also a literal one. I think I missed that class in high school. Indubitably. Right. I'm gonna go with you're not just blowing smoke. I think you. I think that's true. Yeah. I'm gonna go Agreed. with. Agreed. Agreed. I'm gonna go Jimmy? with you're not just blowing smoke. I'm gonna concur with Mr. Dan, Dave. I'm gonna go on the wild side and say you're full of bleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just blowing smoke. You're just blowing. So, smoke. Dave, you're wrong, and everyone else is <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, it's another oh, high five. Oh, oh. Yay! <laughs> high five. So back. <laughs> so back in the 1700s, doctors would literally blow, blow smoke, smoke up someone's backside to resuscitate them. <laughs> Specifically, if they were oh. if they were drowning. Was peyote oh, wow. around then? So, <laughs> you know, peyote, how, does, how does that work? Does the smoke <laughs> expel the water that's in the lungs when it is blown into the oh, nether region? Smoke apparently, from what I've read, d did resuscitate people who were unconscious. Specific, well, they yeah, used it like specifically it's only the if reverse. they were if they had drowned or they had become unconscious uh, while I would swimming. think anything happening in my butt <laughs> 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 I, think, I think we should start doing that at the bar when people get too drunk that might be a, yes yeah, sleep at the bar just... and can we call you to yeah. facilitate that <laughs> well, I, I think that's under... a Kendra job oh, okay. oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, <laughs> ocean master hey he's drowning do you got your pipe <laughs> here's Bob with the weather <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Things you never thought you'd hear on Not Just Blowing Smoke. <laughs> My goodness. That was very interesting. Yes. Yes. I concur. Where did you? Yes, I That's know the word of the day, actually. I pulled that out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I said concur. This is the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the way you resuscitate somebody. Give me your pipe. <laughs> Sweet nuts. Give it back. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> wow. Mm. It was Sweet very nuts. municipal. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so did any of you um did any I know the Patriots weren't in the Super Bowl, but
But the, so did any of you? Did any of you watch it <laughs> last night? Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. watch Bree? Did you watch the Super Bowl? No comment. Did you watch no the Super comment. Bowl? I did not. Oh, well, I thought we had one more high five, but apparently almost. not. Well, it's because I was supposed I was supposed to be going snowboarding for the first time, but uh. the mountain was booked, so. I ended up going to a local brewery instead. Nice. Yes. Where they didn't well, have not... television? No, I wasn't I wasn't really paying attention to it to be honest. Left before the Super Bowl started, drove back and And what did yeah. you do when you got home? Knitted? Relax. Knitted. Knitted. Yeah. Knitted. And <laughs> relax. Play that and, bass uh, guitar. Uh, I feel like I purposely <laughs> didn't watch this year. It's just kind of like I need a break from all the from all the, I yeah. took a different approach this year. I, I actually um, ended up watching it solo, um, and <laughs> I didn't watch any of the pregame. I watched none of it, mm-hmm. and I actually came in about 10 minutes late. Mm-hmm. So I think just to, something different. I didn't yep. want – because I listen to sports radio a lot, and it's just been Brady, 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 Brady. And mm-hmm. Obviously, there's a reason for that. We love Tom. I was like, you know what? I don't even want to watch – I don't want to watch all the hype. I just want to yeah. watch the game. Um, it was a good game. I, I'm astonished that Kansas City didn't come out. They came out the way they did. I'm, right. not, I mean, I'm actually not. Surprised. But you can't. You can't fault. Um, I mean, you know, Tom. Ten times, it's just he's a good dude. Never in trouble. So I was rooting for him. Obviously. Yeah, um, I was rooting for for Tampa. Well, two two touchdowns to Gronk. I mean, was amazing. Yeah. Uh, they broke the record. I mean, that was obviously. Probably something they were going to attempt, anyways. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. it was good. The, the the gentleman that made it onto the field, the streaker, <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah, Those videos going. have been going around. Yeah. The, the ones yeah. from the, the fans. One year Thankfully, I don't the, watch. the fans took the photos, the videos for us because they won't show it anymore. The old days, they used to show it. The poor bastard, uh, he made it. He ran what we were talking earlier, almost sixty yards to the <laughs> one yard line. He slid in and then was abruptly arrested. But <laughs> I think they went overboard. Just, you know what? Just throw the guy out. Yeah. What the hell? Okay. He, uh, clearly, he's not armed. Yeah. He, may, yeah. he may have had too many beverages. Yeah. Why can't it be like the old, you know, just have some fun, whatever. He's I don't armed, know. He stopped the not game. Dangerous. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You look at the guy, he's in a, you know, naked and extremely he, dangerous. Extremely dangerous. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I look at it as they should have just rounded him up and threw him out the fucking front. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, now, one of the reasons to watch a Super Bowl it are the commercials. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, at least it used to be that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, watching the commercials, I, was, no. I was paying attention to them, but I, I didn't really see any big, big uh, things. There weren't any really huge no. movie release. Did, Bud Light what, was the biggest failure this year, I think. Was, yeah. was there a favorite commercial you guys had? Uh, Paramount with, uh, you know, Picard at the top of the mountain and talking to everybody. I, I just thought that was hilarious. I thought that was the best out of all of them. Who was the one when it was probably instead of it did happen? Was that tra- um, what's that comedian there? Tracy. Uh, Tracy that- Ullman? No, oh, no, uh, I, know, I know, I know who you're talking about. That was a yeah. funny one. Yeah. It, 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 they were doing a play on like, is it literal or not? And then probably what happened. And then they show all these. Oh yeah, scenes. yeah, 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 yeah. I think there Tracy was, Morgan. Tracy Morgan. Yeah, yeah. I think there was yeah. two of them. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll take literal. We'll take literal. The, yeah, the the mortgage company. Yeah, yeah. I forget what product it was, but the commercial that showed the lemons dropping out of the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty was a lemon of a year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. one to me was funny. I, I, I didn't watch all the commercials, but I remember laughing at that one. See, I, that, I, I forgot exactly what they were trying to promote. That commercial's but, and they been, been on the day before. before though, yeah, yeah that the commercial's been on for weeks. The day before, they'll yeah. you, you, there's a whole Boston.com had a whole rundown. You can mm-hmm. watch every commercial. Yeah, I didn't watch you know, all of them, but I watched yeah. a few of them. Um, yeah, I, I the thought, instant I thought the com- gratification of the age. <laughs> I yeah. thought the commercials were a dud. Mm. Yeah, overall, to uh, to me, nothing will ever beat the original Budweiser Frogs. <laughs> that was a great series of commercials. The skydiving one of many years ago. I think that was the first uh, commercial of the Super Bowl when the they were up on the plane getting ready to jump, and the guy says. He wouldn't jump, and he's like, the guy's like, not even for a six pack of Bud Light. <laughs> and then the pilot comes running out and jumps out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and I then remember that. There's the infamous Wego, the mm-hmm. dog. Mm-hmm. You named your dog Wego? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, I'm I think, just glad uh, there wasn't a Dilly Dilly commercial. Oh, yeah. I got oh, so tired God. of that. Yeah. Dilly Dilly. Dilly Dilly. But they were funny. 
the, the first few funny, ones were but funny, but then, yeah. it, then it got... Oh, Will Ferrell was beer. funny with the electric car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Norway! <laughs> yeah. You're in Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so cute. How can I be mad at it? Yeah. That was a minute commercial, too, so that was mm. a long one. Yeah. yeah. My mm. favorite all-time is the Terry Tate office linebacker. Yeah. That, to me, is the best one. At the printer? Yeah, yeah that was that the whole, that commercial was. I still, I still <laughs> play it. I still, I still have yeah. it once in a while go online and play that just to get a couple of chuckles. Yeah, one one was insane. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The office linebacker. <laughs> you know you need a cover sheet on your TPS reports, Richard. <laughs> TPS. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that's a good lead-in to my uh, would you rather question for mm, tonight. Boy. This is for everybody, and uh, Jimmy, we'll start with you since oh, wow. you're the uh, big guest for tonight. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Sean big asked, little guest. Sean asked me today, you know, are you having any celebrities on the show? I said, well, we have big Jimmy Price on tonight. He said, no, I mean celebrities. <laughs> oh, excellent. Mr. Reinert. But uh, since you're our big guest tonight, I uh, remember here's that, the would you Sean. rather question. Uh, would you rather... Tom Brady win another Super Bowl or just retire? I am for, I know he's coming back. Um, I want him to come back. And repeating, as we see, is very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. uh, hasn't been done since the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I think 03, 04. Yes. Um, I am a proponent to having Tom come back. He's too competitive. I don't think he's a show off. He loves football. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. um, his accomplishment is insane to leave a, a, a different into a different conference and win with another team that hasn't done anything in 17 years. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Uh, I mean, you've you've watched it all season. You you saw guys taking their sh shirts off after the game, asking for autographs, asking for Tom's shirt. All this, you know, the young kids are out there running around. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a proponent for having him come back. I know he'll come back. He'll at least come back and honor the contract. Mm -hmm. And and depending on what they do next year, I mean, you never know. He could go back to the Super Bowl. So Tom's definitely playing another year. I for he's forty three, so I foresee him playing two more seasons. Is my guess. Okay, he'll come back next year to see what can be done. Yeah, he said he wants have, to play until he's forty five. Forty five, so. yeah. So I think that's a goal he has set in his mind. Um, I mean, the guy's in mint condition, mm -hmm. uh, completely in mint condition. Well, he clearly showed he can still play. He can still play, <laughs> and they all have ugly games. I mean, let's mm -hmm. face it, there was some ugly. They lost three games in a row this year. I mean, mm -hmm. so it, you just never know. Look at the season Aaron Rodgers had. Right, I mean, it's an amazing yeah. season. Um, but we're very, very lucky. I don't think we'll see a group of this many talented quarterbacks in the pool for many, many years. Or also, Obviously, everyone that's on the field is, is a good player. It's very difficult to play uh, football at that level. But I think Tom's coming back. I want him to come back, and I hope they win it again. Okay. Yep. Bree. Uh, so even as someone who doesn't really particularly care much about sports, I do feel like um, with, with him setting a personal goal for going to 45, he at least – at least needs to play another two years just because even in the event that you know next year is not as great he has that extra year people are still very much um i think rooting for like tom brady you never know what's going to happen so i mean I, I could see it happening yeah, yeah. and hey, don't get me wrong i, I, I love yeah. the patriots mm -hmm. um you know we had an incredible 20-year run it's never going to be seen again so I, ha mm -hmm. I have no complaints uh right or bashing or anything. He left. I mean, people leave jobs. You know, yep. they spend yeah. 20 years at a job and they try something new to reinvent themselves. So, I mean, I this it really can't be any bashing or no. hatred towards him. No. I mean, I'm not a season ticket holder. There's a lot of people that have heavily invested, especially financially, to go down there mm -hmm. week after week and spend all that money that really, really are really into it. But, I mean, I, you can't blame the guy. And I don't look at it as a, as a Tom versus Belichick either. I mean, Bill Belichick is a great coach great mastermind of football there are many of them so it is what it is a lot of this is on the radio and oh, sure. they're always pitting people against each other and uh try to take the guy off from the top but right i, I won't take anything away from uh tom or bill belichick or any of the great teams we had so many great teams it's insane mm. i mean football is a club right so there's right. a lot of great 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 teams so we've been extremely fortunate in new england and it was nice and refreshing to see some different teams in the Super Bowl. Well, that's what I, you know, you know that, so, that was that was right. my takeaway. It was nice to watch a Super Bowl where I didn't have to be personally <laughs> invested in it yeah. for the right. first time in like or not watching the first half <laughs> or most of the season, which I was doing towards the end. I wasn't yeah. watching a lot of the Patriots games, not because I'm not a fan, 
Right. But it was all they just methodically made it to the playoffs, and you right. would watch the last three, four games in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, we became kind of conditioned to that. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, <clears throat> what an accomplishment – uh, of all sports, there'll always be debates and who's the best and who's that and all that. But, I mean, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Well, I mean, yeah. I, th- to me, that's over. I mean, uh, Tom the, Brady. Oh, the official Tom Brady debate uh, is over. It, yeah. it should be over. He's he's the, the it's best. Definitely he's over the now. best. He is yeah. the GOAT. He's the best that's yeah. been in the, the game. Yep. And um, someone should tell Shannon Sharp that, too, as well. Because Shannon's been saying for many years, maybe not this past year, but he's on record on t- uh, ESPN and all that. Uh, saying he's done and he's washed up and all this stuff, that only motivates him, I can imagine, yeah. anyone even yeah. more. So never poke Superman memes. in the chest. Right? <laughs> yep. So, mm-hmm. yep. I mean, we've seen Tom play amazing and we've seen him play horrific. So Don't just what it is. Superman's kid. Yeah. And I think uh, Patrick Mahomes is great for the NFL, a nice young man, insane contract. And I think he'll be back. This is a game he'll learn from um, and, and, and go forward. I think he's good for the league. He has a really good vibe. Yeah. Cool. I, I I don't find him to be someone that's going to be in trouble or mm-hmm. any of these things. He's incredibly wealthy now, but uh, I I think he'll be back. The Chiefs aren't going to go anywhere. They're no. not going to roll. I I was shocked at the way they played, honestly, because even when we were up three touchdowns, I'm like, oh, they're going to come back. I yeah. Mean, this is, second half will be, but it kind of went into like a limp mode, and then mm-hmm. it was like, wow, the clock's an issue, and Tom yep. Brady won again. Yep. yep. What do you think, Paul? Do you I think would, he should just end while he's on the top of the mountain, or should he keep going? No, keep going. Um, I will say this, though. If he does come back, well, I know he was coming back, but if he does win next year, I would love to see him retire at that point. Yeah. That's a good point. Retire. Yeah. Point. So give him one more year there. Uh, the, the belief is that Arians wants to keep as many of the players this year uh, for next year, yeah, as much as bring he can. Back. Yeah. So bring back a lot of the core players, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, the talent that he's had this year. If he can keep most of those guys intact, bring Gronk back for another year. Uh, Brady, maybe he can get a few more. Hopefully, maybe Edelman can come in. You know, yeah, that's, a few that's more the Patriots. Top. Yeah, and uh, that wouldn't be surprising either. I wouldn't. I, yeah. I would. Have, I'm expecting that. Uh, you know, Julian's a gamer, as yep. of course. So yep. he's and he and Tom are good friends, and they yeah. they, they 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 practice a lot off season together. Uh, but if they do make it to the Super Bowl and win next year, I would love to see him just go off in the sunset. Yeah. No more. Uh, 45 is a great goal to have, but if he can go out on top, who could not be like happy? Like Elway did it. Maybe exactly. back to back. Yep. Mm-hmm. Back to there back. There was no reason goodbye. to come back. No, nope, third absolutely year. not. There was no yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. Dave, what about you? Yep. I would definitely like to see him leave with an even number of rings. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the memes. The memes. <laughs> That's a nice fistful, <laughs> double fist. Yep. That'd be awesome. What a, I think regardless of what team you're on, to, to be able to be alive during somebody like that is, un, you know, it, it doesn't happen all the time, you know? It's never happened. So, no one's ever done what he's done. But it's amazing. It is. It's absolutely yeah, astounding. And totally I'm happy agree. to see him perform whatever team he's on, and I hope he does it again and again. Mm. So, what's our final verdict here on uh, Gawith, Hargar- Gawith Hogarth's brown bogey? What do you What do you think, Jim? Fantastic! It's one mm. of the better pipe tobaccos I've ever had. Mm-hmm. To be quite honest with you, I've never had it before. Trust you guys immensely. It's hard to find. Immensely. It's hard to find, true. Jim. <clears throat> it is true, and you told me that last mm-hmm. year, about a year ago. You told me when you, I think, remember when you brought mm-hmm. it in, or mm-hmm. and I trust your opinion uh, big time on uh, pipe tobacco and cigars. So, to me, I knew it was going to be a treat. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I would definitely purchase this. What do you think, Bray? I have to agree. It mellows out very nicely on the relight. All mm. the flavors kind of come together at the end. You still get that mesquite undertone. You get mm-hmm. the smokiness. Um, the sweetness kind of mellows out as well. Um, the bourbon pairing just kind of tops it all off. It's almost like a like an extra coating over the mesquite. So yeah, mm-hmm. I would yeah. say it's rounding out very mm-hmm. nicely. Well said would say sausage rope (laughs) (laughs) sausage rope yeah i think it's been a delicious tobacco it's very flavorful um that love the smoky mesquite out of this the sweetness uh the little bit of uh leather tones too Mm. um i think the pairing what can i say it's uh it's been fantastic. You're giving the potion master meat. run for her money. Well, you know, she has to come on the show more often to show me up. But, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. But until then, I'll just, you know, You'll keep just going. Keep stepping up. Keep stepping up. That's right. <laughs> Next man up. It's fantastic.
And Nick's been banned, right? Yeah, yeah basically. He's been banned. banned yeah. Play the cue. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Two Nick has been removed from the panel. <laughs> That's me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dave, what about you? Final verdict on uh, Brown? I just Bogey? picked up on that actually. That's me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I think it's uh, I think it's I think it's great. I think it's great because um, I love the mesquite barbecue. I love the way that the uh, the pairing has brought out the sweeter side of the tobacco mm-hmm. and kind of tucked away that uh, mesquite barbecue. So it's kind of just in the retro <laughs> ale. Uh, I'm. Very I happy. love the mesquite barbecue, and I love how it's been tucked away. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. I Actually, it. what is the blend in this? Is this a lot, lot of Latakia? Or no, what do we no have Latakia in this there's at no all. No Latakia. What do we have in it here? It is a Virginia blend. It is dark-fired Virginia. Ah, that's the all it is. is. That sweet, that's, yeah, there's that that's sweetness. That's where the sweetness yeah. comes from. Now, is this topped? Is it a top? No. no there's no not. topping on it. There's no flavor on it. What's the top again, real quick? The, when they top a tobacco? When they top a tobacco, that's there's there's they make the mix. And then they add a fl- some kind of flavor or to topping it. to it. Oh, uh, okay. Could be bourbon, could be, you know, um, brandy, could be whiskey, could be some kind of flavoring, cherry, you okay. know, whatever. Um, uh, casing is something where a a particular part of the tobacco or maybe the entire mix is, is cased, you know, with that flavoring from the beginning. That becomes part of the... You know, so it, a topping is kind of like let's salt and pepper it with this. Ah, okay. Whereas the the um, casing would be You're let's put this let's, it, put right? this let's put this let's put this in a kind of a gravy or something. Okay, all right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Or roux, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm. <clears throat> oh, I really like this tobacco. It's great. Uh, ropes are hard to find, but uh, I believe they are worth it, especially got with Hogarth's uh, ropes and. Uh, we've had um, Brown Irish X, which is a thicker rope, um, and we've had Black Irish X on the show. This is our third God with Hogarth rope we've uh, tried on the show, and all three of them have been yeah. fantastic. We've really, also done really Brown good. Number Four. Let's not Brown Number four, four is a Samuel oh, Gawith yeah. uh, rope mm-hmm. um, that comes in tins, fifty gram tins, and mm. uh, that's good stuff too. Mm. Oh, uh, now next week, next week we have a very special episode. We have the True Crime Show, and we are going to be joined by retired private eye twins tobacconist Scott Keller. Wow, and he's going to talk to us about Netflix hit documentary Trial Four, which is about um, uh, a man who was uh, accused of. Uh, murdering a Boston police officer back in the early 1990s and um, is now getting a new trial. And it, if you watch this documentary, Trial 4, which talks about how they get to trial number four, uh, Scott is in ec- episode six and seven. I saw a clip from that. And yes. he is actually the guy who blows this whole thing open and basically really? shows how this guy could not have done it. And it's amazing to watch. And so he's going to talk to us about his experience as a private investigator, that he's going to talk about the trial four documentary, and uh, it's going to be a really, really cool episode. Mm. And we'll be smoking one of his favorite cigars, the diamond crown Maximus Toro number nice. four. And we'll be smoking Captain Earl's 10 Russians, oh. 10 Russians, 10 Russians. It ten smokes Russians. you. <laughs> so please subscribe to us on youtube and follow us on facebook at facebook.com um, forward slash njbs podcast and at not just blowing smoke on instagram so you don't miss a thing thanks for being with us tonight and that my friends is not just blowing smoke thanks for being with us you've been listening to not just blowing smoke The podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at NotJustBlowingSmoke. Thanks for listening, everybody, and that is Not Just Blowing Smoke. Rolling with
the top down, smoking on.